Yo, hello everybody, how's it going? It's your boy Groovy Buddha. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'll be making some videos again now that the weather's nicer and, uh, you know, it's not as depressing out. <laughs> um, but I want to show you guys this chess game. Uh, this is a fantastic chess game that I played. Um, I did not cheat at it, uh, but I'll show you here what's going on. So, the computer, uh, I, I, I pay for, you know, chess uh, premium, so I can analyze the games after they're played. So the game is saying that I played at 96%, which is basically saying that I didn't make, well, uh, actually it's saying I could have played better, but here's the tail of the tape. So I made 17 engines top choice moves compared to his 11, um, you know, five excellent moves, you know, one good move. There was a missed win in there, you know, some mistakes and stuff. So Anyways, let's get to the game, because it's quick, but it's it's really cool. So, and uh, by the way, he, he's rated 1699, and I was like 1547 or something at the time. So he was almost 1700. So we start out with the Queen's Gambit declined. And he goes, you know, he goes for this, and uh, I go for, you know, Bishop G5 here. I believe this is called the Ragozin. I'm going to have to double check that. And... I put this uh, pawn here to stop the bishop and knight coordinating here on c2. And I take here, that's a book move, and strengthening this pawn here. Um, but uh, I'll show you here what's going on. Yeah, uh, see, what I wanted to do was go to b3 here, put pressure on this pawn on b7, and also strike here at d5. Uh, because the knight's pinned, so he unpinned his knight. And I developed my knight, and he castles, I challenge his bishop, he's uninterested in a bishop trade there, but also he is triple attacking my bishop here, uh, and then rather than have his knight take my bishop, I'm just going to take his bishop with my bishop, because we don't give up bishop pairs for just nothing around here. He recaptures. And I'm getting my queen and bishop on this really nice, strong diagonal. And, and yeah, he pushes a5 for, for some reason and just gave me the opportunity that I needed. I was triple attacking that knight, and he was only double defending it. So I took my chance. I'm a pawn up. Castle. And I developed uh, this rook over here. I was a bit dubious about that, but... Well, the reason being is because uh, if this had opened up here, I didn't want this pawn to become weak. I wanted this to be really nice and strong. I, I seen this opening up here. This looked pretty nice and strong. My queen and knight were here to protect. So I was I was willing to do some battle over here. And, you know, obviously he's trying to attack my king's side. So he, he just, you know, opens up with f5, which, which is not bad, I suppose. But, yeah, I, I just seen e6 right away, went for the check hopped in there with the knight. Um, the reason why I didn't go to e5 with the knight uh, earlier is because I didn't want his... Because, um, see, the queen was on e4. If the if the knight would have hopped here, then he could have put the rook there, and that would have pinned my, my knight. But now that the queen is there, now I can hop the knight in. Challenging his knight. I know it's kind of boring, but when you're up a, a, a pawn, especially against a really good player... You want a boring game. You just want to trade pieces all the way down because it could get all the way down to just a king and a pawn. And if I'm a pawn up, well, it's going to get to the point where I have a pawn and you don't. And I'm going to win. So, and that's just... Um, yeah, so he tries to mobilize the queen. This move right here was fantastic. This was just awesome here. I just realized my position was solid. And how could I, how could I put some more pressure on the queen? Bam! Rook to c5. Oh, oh, I didn't even realize that I was super attacking a5. But really what I was stopping that pawn from advancing is because his queen's undefended. No, I didn't even need the rook there. But still, I was just putting a lot of pressure there on the on the fifth rank, which is nice. He's trying to bust open the queen, the, the king side. Um, you know, g3, obviously. Um, h4, king g2. Um, H takes on um, G3, and then H takes G3, which was great because, like, I noticed this this whole file opened up for my rook. His queen vacated, bam, in for the check. 
and I, I realized right here, I'm like, okay, like that rook isn't is that rook is pinned. So I could win his rook right now with a nice little trick. Uh, I can slam rook to h8, pulling the king away from the rook, defense of the rook, and then grab the rook. But um, what I did was I just held the position, and there's a saying in chess that you attack pinned pieces. So that's exactly what I did. I kept the tension, I kept the rook pinned, I attacked the rook with my other rook, so now it's double attacked. So now he defends it, and then I got a better idea. Take here, he comes here, now rook h8, and he quit, because <laughs> I'm going to grab his queen. Yeah, and he was almost 1700 rated, so yeah, I can show you. Bam, there's my terrible score with my little freaking face. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, uh, thank you for being here with me. I promise I will make some more videos. Uh, I have I have a, a third mushroom trip. I have a fourth mushroom trip and a whole bunch of other stuff to share with you guys. So hope everybody's doing well and uh, take care. Love you guys.